Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jenkles. This, in a tier 9 encounter battle on the Berlin map, is Soul Worker. In the Italian tier 9 auto-reloading medium tank, the Prototipo Standard B. Soul Worker has 30,000 games played in World of Tanks. It's fair to say he's a bit of a glutton for punishment. But this is the best game that he ever played. So what's this auto-reloading thing then, Jingles? Well, for those of you who are new to World of Tanks, you may be aware that there are certain types of tank in the game that have auto-loading mechanisms on their main guns. Typically the French. But in most auto-loaders, you have to fire every shot in the clip before the clip will start to reload. The Italians, however, are slightly different. That's why they're called auto-reloaders rather than auto-loaders. The Prototipo Standard B here, for example, has a three-shot auto-reloader. But unlike other tanks with auto-loaders, it doesn't have to wait for all three shots to be fired before it starts reloading. As soon as one shot is fired, the reloader gets to work. The only downside is that the more shots that you've fired, the longer it takes to reload each individual shot. So, well, to put this in terms that you'll probably understand best, if you shoot your load early, it takes much, much longer for you to get it back up again. Yeah, that's right, I went there. <laughs> well, you would have been disappointed if I didn't. So, what's special about the Berlin map, particularly in encounter mode, is this bunker in the middle of the map, which covers most of the cap circle. You don't have to be inside the bunker to be in the cap circle, as uh, Soul Worker is demonstrating here, but, well, you are kind of horribly vulnerable because the cap circle is on a, a patch of raised ground right in the middle of the map. So, you know, if anybody can see you, they can pretty much hit you. Now, one member of Soul Worker's team, the T-71 CMCD, a light tank, has rushed inside the bunker and is starting to cap, and Soul Worker is doing his level best to ensure that he's allowed to cap uninterrupted. Unfortunately, as we're about to see, by the state of the T-71's health pool, he's doing a remarkably piss-poor job of taking advantage of those thick reinforced concrete bunker walls. Soul Worker's doing his best to try to keep enemy tanks away from him, and under normal circumstances, Soul Worker's efforts would have been enough. He's managing to keep the P-43 at bay, but the AMX-1375 slips inside, and is easily able to win a one-on-one -on -one with the American autoloader as Soul Worker dispatches the P-43 and the AMX 1375, who, it has to be admitted, played that extremely well, straight in, got the kill, straight out again, didn't take a single point of damage, and was smart enough to know when to cut and run, didn't attempt to loiter around inside the bunker, waiting to be killed by an auto-reloading tier 9 medium. He got in, he got the job done, he got out. And we're going to be seeing more of that AMX 1375. He's going to be a constant thorn in Soul Worker's side for the, well, pretty much the entire duration of this match. There he is, tucked up against the bunker wall on the outside, proximity spotting Soul Worker, which allows the T 54 to get a shot into him, and Soul Worker is very lucky that his tracks absorbed it. He uses the repair kit, and he's now constantly being proximity spotted by the AMX 1375. Again, for those of you who are possibly new to World of Tanks, there's an enemy tank within 50 meters of you. Even if you can't physically see each other because there's a solid object in the way, you both appear on each other's mini-maps. You're both visible to each other. And if you're visible to the AMX 1375, you're visible to his teammates as well. Or at least those of his teammates who are within his radio range. Of course, that works both ways. The AMX 1375 is also visible to all of Soul Worker's teammates. But the AMX is small enough that Soul Worker, even with his 10 degrees of gun depression, can't actually shoot him through the window and smart enough to stay on the unengaged side of the bunker so none of Soul Worker's teammates actually have a shot at him. So unable to hit the AMX, Soul Worker busies himself shooting up this Skoda T-50, who, it has to be said, is extremely generously ensuring that he sticks to the high ground to ensure that Soul Worker actually has shots at him over the concrete embrasures blocking most of the line of sight out of the mouth of the bunker there. Having expended his entire clip on the Skoda T-50, Soul Worker is now suffering through a painfully long reload on this 105mm auto-reloader. He's got one shot ready to go, but notice how he waits until he's got the second shot loaded before he takes the kill on the Renegade over there. This is to ensure uh, that he gets as fast a reload as possible on the remaining two shots. 
He takes a hit on the back of the turret there from the Scorpion G, but it's at such an extreme angle that it is extremely lucky for it to go bouncing off. One thing you definitely cannot accuse this tank of is being blessed with an overabundance of armour. The rear of the turret's only 55mm thick. And in fact, just about the only place you can actually expect to bounce a shot on this thing, if the shot hits square on, would be the gun mantlet. Luckily, that 128mm shell from the Scorpion G hit the back of the turret at an extreme angle, so it ricocheted off harmlessly. So the armour is lousy. But one extremely good thing about this tank, assuming you've upgraded to the 105mm gun over the stock 90mm gun, is the penetration. It gets 268mm with standard armour-piercing ammunition. And you absolutely should upgrade the gun on this thing first, because it gives you much, much better damage potential. Although, having said that, the stock 90mm gun isn't bad at all. It has 212mm of penetration. Which, at that angle, would almost certainly not have been able to kill the E75, which is another reason why you definitely want to upgrade to the 105mm gun first. But even without it, the 90mm gun, in fact, the whole stock experience of driving this tank isn't really that bad at all. It's definitely not like driving a Type 4 Cheeto stock or a VK3001P, which is a horrific experience that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Oh, he's been hit. T-54 in the bushes. Is he going to risk a second shot? I think he is. He's not gonna, no, he's not going to risk a third. Waits for the T-54 to miss, and it looks like artillery even trying to lob shots through the embrasure. Fires a blind shot into the bushes and the AMX 1375. It has to be said... Definitely not a man to miss an opportunity, timed that one perfectly. Although he might have outstayed his welcome just a little, took a couple of shots from, I think, possibly the Kanonen Jagdpanzer 105 to the rear, and was very... Oh dear, the Tiger's had his tracks blown off. Oh well, we can scratch one Tiger. The Tiger did get a shot in, though, and the 1375 definitely hurt him. He could certainly have done without that. Oh, hang on a minute. Come to Papa. Do it nice and slowly, so we've got time for the auto-reloader to finish. <laughs> if you could... Yes, there we go. That 1375 is continuing to be a massive pain in the arse. Team are down 7 kills to 11. Could really use this kill until he's had 111. There he is. First shot, damage. Second shot, naturally, goes high, straight into the side of the turret. Third shot, fired blind. Probably did damage, but it wasn't enough. If all three shots had gone in, that would have been a dead WZ-111, but they didn't, so it isn't. And the AMX continues to ruin his day by keeping him spotted and continuing to cock-block the capture progress. However, it's possible that our little French friend there might have outstayed his welcome, because here comes the cavalry in the shape of the team's Tiger II. Unfortunately, the AMX over there knows something that the Tiger II doesn't, but should have been able to guess. Yes, he's driving right into the field of fire of the T-54 and the Rheinmetall Scorpion. So, there goes the Tiger II. Didn't even manage to kill the AMX. So now it's three against eight. It's quite fortunate, really, that the Prototipo Standard B has such a generous ammunition load. 60 rounds of ammunition in total. I think Soul Worker's gonna need it. The team's sole surviving artillery, the GW Panther, is bidding a fond farewell to his teammates in chat. He's pretty sure that he's about to die. And he is. But he does at least manage to take that WZ-111 out with him before he, in turn, gets dispatched by the enemy artillery, two of whom have been having an extremely good game uh, with two kills each. And that leaves just Soul Worker and the friendly Kanon and Jagdpanzer 105 against seven enemies. Soul Worker... You clearly haven't been carrying hard enough so far, it's time to step up your game. He starts by securing the top gun on the Scorpion G, and the remainder are being forced to keep their heads down by the Kanonen Jagdpanzer 105 to the rear. Who is spotted and getting shelled by artillery, but is in a spot to cover the entrance. And with the T-54 and the AMX both being one-shot kills, they're both kind of sitting there looking at each other saying, go on then, you first, which of course is given Soul Worker the time that he needs to reload. The T-54 finally finds his man pants, but of course it's far too late and he's just the next victim. And the AMX, way too slow, for once, getting back into cover around the side of the building. And now, while they are still technically outnumbered two to one, it's two actual tanks against three artillery and one actual tank. The SU-130PM, who's just fluffed his shot, caught in the open and getting shot at from both directions. 
and there is kill number nine. Now, they're both still outnumbered, but, well, it's a mostly full health Kanonen Jagdpanzer 105 who's been doing a great job of avoiding getting hit by artillery, although they keep missing, and not by much, enough to stun him, but without doing any real damage. And, of course, Soul Worker's Prototipo Standard B. And Soul Worker is, of course, inside a bunker. Soul Worker, what are you doing? Get back in the bunker. <laughs> Get back in the... that's it. Get back to where you're immune to artillery fire. Oh, speaking of which... Hello. Momentarily spotted. Knows he's been spotted. Isn't taking any risks. It's difficult to see how the artillery can win this. I mean, they're not direct fire weapons, even if they have direct line of fire. They're not particularly accurate weapons. They'd be extremely lucky. I'm not saying it can't be done, but they would be extremely lucky to be able to pop a shot through the firing port in the bunker here. And even then, it would probably take more than one. So pretty much all Soul Worker has to do now is just sit here and wait, and they'll win by capping. Of course, it's traditional at this point for the team that's about to win to suffer from a sudden rush of shit to the brain and decide that they have to win harder by not capping and killing all. Please, Soul Worker. <laughs> I thought he was going to do it as well, because he did say in chat, Jagdpanzer 105, get over here and I'll go hunting. No, really, don't do that. Absolutely don't do that. All you have to do to win is nothing. The artillery are the ones that have to take the risks. There's the GW Panther. First shot missed, of course. But the second one, and the third one, did not. 10 kills, there's the pool's medal. And the M12's just been taken care of by the Kanonen Jagdpanzer 105. And oh, you just had to do it, didn't you? <laughs> the Crusader SP has hit him and reset him as he paused just outside the entrance to the bunker. And well, since he's been reset now, it doesn't really matter. Well, technically, the Crusader SP didn't even hit him. That was splash damage. And one hell of a Hail Mary shot from the Crusader SP, who I think just targeted the entrance in the hopes of hitting something. So... Well, there's a Defender medal, at least for the Crusader SP, but his ticket is well and truly about to get punched because Soul Worker saw which direction the shot came from and there's nowhere for the Crusader SP to run to. It's probably only going to take one shot as well. This is a 105mm gun after all. There's absolutely nowhere for him to be. There he is. There's the shot. There's the 11th kill. And there's the game. Soul Worker has 30,000 games played in World of Tanks. This is the best result he has ever managed to earn. And I think it's going to be an extremely long time, if ever, before he has a better result than this. So, Soul Worker, that's it. You're done. You've beat World of Tanks. <laughs> you can stop playing now. Extremely well done on the result. And everybody else, I hope you enjoyed it, because that's it for today. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.